So after November getting a mini pixel drop of its own, we have a bigger update now in December with QPR2, aka the December pixel drop. So without any further ado, let's get it. Before they know if you love this stuff, Android stuff, pixel stuff, stuff stuff, then hit subscribe. You'll be very welcome as part of the crew and I'd be very happy to have you as well. Cheers. So if you missed it, last month was an out of character update from Google. Go check out that video down in the description below for some cool stuff like theming, AI notification summaries, and a lower power mode for Google Maps. There's a lot of things there as well. It's basically a precursor to this update, but this is a bigger release. And without getting too much into the nitty gritty, the minutia that we normally do with a deep dive into Android, here I think are a few of our headline or top editions, basically the stuff you need to know. So let's get into it. We've had a dedicated dark theme on Pixel since Android, the Android 10 era, I think off the top of my head, but Android 16 QPR2 is the first to take the feature forward in any meaningful way in a little bit of time at this point. There is a new expanded option within the display settings section that attempts to force certain applications that still don't support this mode to actually work with your phone, while also making some adjustments itself to ensure that these apps function properly. Although we can't list out a full set of applications because that would take probably forever, this works with some of the most prominent ones. From my perspective, it seems to work with the UK's BBC. Basically, apps like BBC Sport won't be quite as eye-searing all of the time if you do have this enabled. And for other applications that this works with, you will have a better experience if you are a dark mode fan, which of course you probably are. Split screen also gets a new option that lets you adjust the layout for a true 90-10 split, meaning you can have a, almost a full screen app experience with one application while the other is almost, and I say almost, fully minimized. For multitasking, I think this is great for applications that maybe might require the keyboard to be available or maybe require more visible on-screen elements that you can interact and tap with. You can switch back quickly and switch between if needed, as you have always been able to do on split screen mode without hindering the experience all that drastically and I really like this option as it means I can watch a video in the background or play some music and then play other games or maybe browse the internet as well. You don't also need to worry about HDR content being too bright or intense with new controls here in QPR2 to adjust the effect. The enhanced HDR brightness toggle which is found in display settings allows you to adjust the intensity with a comparison against standard non-HDR images so basically you can tune that as you want to have that best experience when using a supported pixel. For social media, this might help reduce how drastically different some content can look from regular SDR content. You know what I mean? You're scrolling through Instagram and something just bleeds your eyes to death, if as it were, because it's far too bright. Yeah, this allows you to toggle that, which I think is a really nice accessibility and just a general quality of life addition. And this sounds like a minor change, but you don't need to do the annoying drag to top of your screen to ditch apps from the home screen thanks to a new remove toggle that will appear when long pressing home screen app icons here in QPR2. While it doesn't quite match the ability to select multiple apps at once, which I would love to see here in a Pixel phone, it is a much faster and more convenient than it has been on previous Android builds, which, yeah, as I say, you have to drag them all the way to the top, which felt a little bit counterintuitive, especially if you have bigger screens, especially those foldables and tablets. Expanding on that remove option, though, you also gain quick app shortcuts that you can quickly add to your home screen. This speeds up that process of getting into certain areas of applications. You can add these icons to your device if you use certain things regularly within certain applications. Think Chrome, for instance. In the past, you would have had to use a third party app or long press the icon to access these controls. I think this is a really nice option and you can just add these right from here with that little plus button. Really nice touch. I think this is all of these little, little extras I think Google's getting, getting to grips with. And this is one of those that I'm really excited that a lot of people out there will probably love as well. The widget panel has been altered as well in Android 16 QPR2 as it now features two prominent tab sections as opposed to one fully integrated one. So the, the old layout is still here, but the default featured view replaces that old top panel, the one that was introduced a few updates ago that shows some suggestions based upon your application usage. The browse tab is with that same layout you're probably used to, but it's more compact and it retains that same search function that again, which allows you to find widgets that you want to add to your home screen. Some might find this a little bit slow, but I do think it's more visually dense than it has been before, and that might be useful if you want to see things that fit with the rest of your device theme. Sticking with widgets though, these are now back on your lock screen on Pixel phones, but maybe not quite how you were expecting them to be. The hub mode brings a feature over from the Pixel tablet to your phone with a right swipe from this area, now allowing you to nest almost all of your favorite widgets right there from your home screen, on your lock screen. This layout follows and fits the portrait orientation, which means that some widgets might not work how you expect them to. You can have multiple pages of widgets and usually a maximum of three per page is the default. 
There are a number of default options as well when you set this up for the first time by going to settings, lock screen, widgets on lock screen. This function is technically in beta right now, so it may develop over time too. Some third party widgets, at least in our testing, that work on your home screen might not be or might be a little bit buggy over here. That said, I do think is a great solution so far and something we've wanted and heard about for a little while and it's great to see it finally be introduced to the masses. Another feature that may or is sort of coming back to life is if you recall Android Beam and are familiar with that tap to share feature on iOS with the tapping at the top of the phones, Quick Share now has its own version of this here in Android 16 QPR 2, which means you can tap the top of your phone to another top of a phone when Quick Share is open to connect with that device and have those settings shared instantly. It won't work without this in our testing and mimics something that was actually added when using Nearby Share, or at least when Nearby Share was first introduced back in 2021. That old method still works, which allows you to tap the back of your phone to another phone, but this new sending option is gonna be great for iOS converts and works, at least in our testing, a little bit more consistency. We've also waited a long time for Google to begin reintroducing features that we had in the pre-Android 12 era, and I think this update has done that quite drastically, but it begins here with a new set of building blocks for theming. The first of those is custom icon shapes. Yes, we are regaining the long lost custom icon feature here in QPR2 with the ability to choose up to five shapes for those home screen glyphs that you choose. The icons do not have names, which is a bit weird. So bear with me, I'm gonna try and explain them. You, so you get that regulation circular style, you got those squircles, which are common on a lot of other Android builds, an X shape rounded rectangle, which has little indented sides. There's a scallop or like shell type shape here and a rounded hectangle. We're definitely hoping that these can be expanded on in the future, but I do think it's a great start for now as we're reintroducing something that was lost in older builds. On top of that, another bonus here is added with forced icon theme in it. It's been touted on Android for some time. We've, we've heard people talk about it. We've talked about it here on the channel. This has developed and improved over the past couple of years so that lots of applications that ordinarily do not support this feature right out of the box should get the right color and tone for your theme. One of the most obvious is the Uber application. I'm sure a lot of you have been frustrated by this. I'm always frustrated about this and it means I don't always use theming as a result. This now should fully fit your device theme for the first time but there are more applications that this will work with now. And of course, if you have any of your own, drop them down in the comment sections below. Another cool feature is that Health Connect is now able to use your phone to count daily steps and finally brings, I think, a basic feature that many other Android phones have had on them for a number of years to Android 16 QPR2. You need to go into Health Connect settings. You may get a notification for this as well when you install this OTA and select devices. This will allow you to toggle the step count from your phone. And yeah, it's a really basic way to count your steps, but at least it's being added here finally. Another great security feature is the expanded identity check. So if you didn't know, don't know about this, Pixels have a feature that requires biometric authentication, if I can even say that, using face or fingerprint recognition to help keep your phone secure if it's potentially stolen or lost. You need to enable this in settings, but here in QPR2, it has expanded over the controls introduced with Android 15 when it was first added. It'll work in more applications and force biometrics to be used to access certain areas where ordinarily a pin might be used or required by those apps. This just makes it harder for people to crack the protections if your phone is stolen or taken by someone untrustworthy, something we can all get behind. And if you travel a ton, I think one cool but admittedly small feature added here in QPR2 is notifications when you hit or move to a brand new time zone. For me, this has been super helpful. And for anyone who lives close to a time zone border or when you're traveling a lot, especially those of you in Europe who can travel from border to border, you instantly know that your on-device clock is up to date with this notification. For what it's worth, it does work with those GPS spoofing location applications. So if you are using this in conjunction with a specific app or a game that mimics your location, allows you to get geo access, you will get a notification if this is enabled. And I thought this was cool as well as, yeah, it doesn't need to work in that instance, but I like the fact that it does either way. So that is Android 16 QPR2. I know it's a bit of a whirlwind of top features and stuff there. I don't think it's too shabby if you ask me. There's a lot more here. Most of it is just little cosmetic changes. There are some stuff as there is some stuff as well, uh, technically, technically tied to this, I guess, for other partner Android phones as part of a wider Android feature drop. So check out our video on that, which is linked down below as well. We've got a twofer, as it were. I think Jordan can explain that for you a little bit better than I can here. But let me know what you think is the most important update to this QPR2 release which is off the back of another pixel drop. It's confusing. Let me know what you think is the best feature down in the description below. Sorry, down in the comment sections below, but cheers for making it this far. Cheers for watching. And as always, I'll speak to you later.